Good to see you here on a Wednesday night. Amen. Thank you for being here in church tonight. Why don't we stand for just a moment? You know, while Jesus was only a few hours away from his death, when he was praying alone in the garden and his disciples had left him and they had fallen asleep, he prayed a powerful prayer in Luke chapter 22 and verse 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus was giving us an example of this crucifixion we all have to endure. Not our will, but his be done. And so then we ask ourselves, what is this will of God? Well, it takes many forms. And ultimately, the word of God is his will. And we see, you know, pieces here and there where the word teaches us more accurately what his will is. In Ephesians 5, verse 20, Paul helps us understand that we are to be giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That this is the will of God. That we give thanks in everything, in every situation. And sometimes it does feel like a crucifixion. When you have, feel like you have nothing to be thankful for, you still in the midst say, thank you, Jesus. So why don't we right now take a moment, no matter where we are in our minds, our hearts, just begin to thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this night that we have. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Thank you, Jesus, for the good days and the bad days. Thank you for this service. Thank you for these holidays, Jesus. Thank you for this building and this church and all the blessings that you bestowed upon us, God. Thank you for even the miserable situations. But we know that the trying of our faith works patience. Thank you, God, for the bright and beautiful and sunny days. Thank you, Jesus. In everything, we give thanks. For we know this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Amen. Why don't we take this opportunity to worship as we give thanks. You may be seated.
If you know he's good, just keep worshiping. Just keep clapping your hands to him. Thank you, Jesus, for being good to us when we don't deserve it, God. Jesus, your goodness is unmatched. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He really is good to us. And like we've been hearing at our church here lately, we'll be able to tell him very soon how thankful we are face to face, face to face, how thankful we are for his goodness. Hey man, I want to share a few announcements tonight. You may be seated. Oh, Holy Night is coming up. And it's not December 25th I'm talking about. It's December 3rd when we're hosting our Christmas gala. You all will be served by our wonderful youth team. You'll have some beautiful dishes that are going to be prepared by a team we have as well. We're so excited for you to be there. That's going to be December 3rd at 6 p.m. The cost is $25 uh, for anyone 12 and older, and then $10 is for child care. Food will be provided. So 
Our last day to sign up is this Sunday. We want to make sure we have a good count, can get the right amount of food. Uh, and then uh, you can also sign up online. So you've been possibly getting some messages from the church if you're signed up for uh, church text messages where you can sign up online. So that's an option as well. And we'll have somebody in the foyer after church today as well as Sunday. If you are looking for a Bible study, we have a QR code in, in our bulletin and I believe here on the screen as well uh, where you can sign up for a Bible study. It's a beautiful thing to get in the Word of God and to know it for yourself. Amen. So we have that available. This Sunday, Brother Jet will be joining us and preaching. Amen. That's exciting. A wonderful, wonderful youth pastor and leader here for many years. He'll be joining us with his family this Sunday, so please make sure to be here this Sunday. Also for the Convalescent Care Ministry, if you're interested in participating in the Christmas service and gift distribution, please see Sister Barbara Sims at the information desk after service. She will get you hooked up with all the information you need to know. It's a wonderful thing to be able to give to others in this time. Also. New Connections class uh, begins this Sunday, another uh, session of, of these classes. And the sign-up sheet is at the information desk. Uh, and so if you are uh, wanting to get connected and get this information from this class, you can sign up at the information desk in the foyer. <laughs> Amen. So you know, as he was uh, speaking, you know, he was talking about the trash. And uh, you may not be aware of it, but twice... Recently, we've been charged an additional $300 for them to remove the overflow in the trash. That's $600. And so, you know, Pastor Shepherd is such a great steward, obviously. We look around and we know that he, he watches each and everything and Sister Shepherd. So it's not just because it's a great idea. It's, it's expensive if we do that. So I just wanted to reiterate a little bit the reason why we're asking you to break down the trash and to, you know, make sure you put it in the right reciprocal. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Sheffield, it's awesome to see you tonight. So glad you're here. They thought he suffered a stroke, and here he is. Amen. Uh, we need to remember uh, Judy and Evelyn Hammett. Also, a Joyce Likes needs healing for an infection in her body. Sister Beverly Green has submitted that. Clarence Rogers needs God's touch upon his mind. He is suffering from anxiety due to a stroke. Lori and Chris Kelly were both seriously burned in a house fire, and uh, she is in serious condition, and they're asking for prayer. Joe Sheffield for recovery. God has done it. He's here. And also a young lady that's attending our church, Sister Dora, she needs a local job. She's been traveling back and forth to the chicken factory, and uh, we're going to pray and believe God that she's going to find a job right around her house so that she is able to facilitate daycare for her son, and uh, we want to be a blessing to her. Amen. You know, when the prophet Isaiah asked, he said, Who hath believed our reports, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Isaiah reminds each and every one of us to believe everything that Christ did for us on the cross. Jesus forgave our sins, and he purchased our salvation, assuring us of eternal life. Thank God. That's what the cross represents. But you know what? His sacrifice did a whole lot more than just that. The Amplified Bible says it this way. Surely our griefs, our sicknesses, he himself bore, and our sorrows, our pain, he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities and the chastisement for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, his stripes, those blows that cut into his flesh, Scripture says we're healed. Everything you and I need tonight has already been provided for us from the cross of Calvary. And as we stand and prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, what can you believe God for tonight? 
Isaiah was sending a rally cry to Israel. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? And tonight we have faith because we know that God is able. He is going to exceed our expectations tonight, and he's going to do the impossible. Do you believe that? Do you think he will? I know he will. I have seen it recently in my life time and time again. God, he does the impossible if you can trust him with your situation. Can we go to the Lord in prayer tonight? Heavenly Father, we just thank you. For each and every one that is in this facility giving you thanks. Lord, we're so grateful, Lord God, to be able to celebrate this wonderful holiday of Thanksgiving. But God, we know to whom our thanks belongs, and that is to you. Lord, we thank you for Joyce Likes tonight, and we ask that you would heal her body of that infection. We pray for Clarence Rogers. God, touch his mind, his heart, and his soul. And if he doesn't know you, Lord, turn him around. Turn him towards you, because you're the source of all his strength and healing. We pray for the Kelly family, that God, you would heal them of this terrible burn in this situation. We thank you for Joe Sheffield being here tonight. What a testimony. Lord, we thank you for Sister Dora's new job in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we declare it to be so. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that is in this facility that sacrificed their time to attend the house of God. I pray that you would honor and bless them and keep them. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the good Oh, my life you have been so, so good. 
table when we were children, we were taught this simple prayer, God is good, God is great, let us thank Him, let us thank Him, and then in the psalm it says, enter into His gates with thanksgiving, so being thankful should be part and parcel of who we are as people, to be thankful. And you know what? You can't bring forth bitter water and sweet water from the same spring. It's either sweet or it's bitter. And the Bible teaches that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And uh, you cannot complain and you cannot give thanks at the same time. Hallelujah. So if you have a problem with complaining or always disagreeing or always being disagreeable, start giving thanks. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the King of Kings and it'll change your life to become a thankful person. Amen. And so I'm here to take an offering like I do every Wednesday. And we understand what tithe is a tithe is a 10 percent so if i make a thousand dollars a tithe would be a hundred dollars you know you can learn that in sixth grade math okay it's not hard a tithe is a 10. okay but the bible never really tells us how much to give in an offering so this is what i think and this is what i heard how thankful are you let your thanksgiving determine how much you give. Isn't that simple? Just be thankful. And if you're thankful to the Lord, you will find it easy to give unto the Lord. So we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. And King David, when he was an old man, said, I was young, but now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. God is faithful to the faithful. We're going to pray for this offering. Lord Jesus, help us to be your people. Help us to be thankful people, Lord. Thankful, Lord, for all that you have done. Lord, help us to put aside bitterness. Help us to put aside complaining and disagreeing. And help us, Lord, to learn to be thankful people, Lord thankful in every situation because we know that this is the will of God that in everything that we would give thanks amen in Jesus name bless your people today amen
Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. You've given us our lives, God. You put breath in our lungs. You're the only reason we're here tonight. We thank you, Jesus, with not just our words, but our lives. We thank you tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It does something good to your heart, you know, to be thankful. Like Brother Langle is mentioning, you know, when you complain, you're compounding those negative feelings, right? You're packing them on top of each other again, and you start getting with somebody, y'all complaining together, and they condense, they concentrate. But when you're, you're thankful, you know, it happens in reverse. You begin to get lighter. You begin to remember all the things that God has done for you. It, it, th that pressure releases off of you. And so we take this opportunity to be thankful to God, to be thankful to God for all that he's done. Amen. Thank you for standing tonight. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus, for these nice seats, right? Amen. Nice and comfy. Lumbar support. Praise God. The holidays. Full of family, food, frustration, uh, fighting, hopefully forgiveness. All of these things meet us here during the holidays. And I've realized sometimes in life we've, we've got to dig deep in order to remember what we ought to be thankful for. And sometimes when things are taken away from us unexpectedly, we realize how we took them for granted before. I remember a few months ago, maybe a year ago at this point, um, I, uh, I, I sort of lost a little bit of hearing in my ear. And it was temporary and it wasn't, you know, too big of a scenario. You know, it was supposed to come back with some time, uh, but it didn't. And it just kind of, it was just ringing and it was just not the same. And I love music. I listen to music all the time. And I'm hearing the drums over here, but I can't hear the drums here. And I hear the cymbals here, but I can't hear them here. And I remember thinking in that time, I've never thanked you, God, really for my hearing. But something as simple as that, now that I'm missing even a piece of it, I realize how much you've done for me. And so I've enlisted some young people to help us tonight. Uh, by showing what they are thankful for during this holiday season. We'll be joined first by Emmanuel, then Avian, and then Saran. So let's join together with them as we listen how they are thankful in this holiday season. First, I would like to thank Pastor Shepard and Brother Eddie for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all. Today, I will be reading a Thanksgiving poem titled, Let Us Give Thanks, written by Jahard Frost. Let us give thanks this moment. For the sturdy fact of God's continuing love, for the mercies which go before us and follow after us, for those free gifts which cost God so much. Let us give thanks for memory and expectation, for the good that we have known and know today in Jesus Christ, for the Spirit's broadening presence in our nights and our days. Let us give thanks for pleasures which comfort and pains which force our growth and keep us at the separate side, for deep meanings revealed and mysteries mercifully concealed for the image of God within us the capacity to inquire and adore let us give thanks for one another for just being together for the differences that complement and complete for gifts which enrich and disagreements which challenge for our oneness in Christ let us give thanks for melody and mirth for rhythm and beat for the repeated and the common 
for the ever unfolding and for senses with which to respond. And let us give thanks for someone to thank. Have a great thanks. I would like to thank Pastor Shepherd and Brother Eddie for the opportunity to speak tonight. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times. I first want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the closest friend that I could ever have. He is enough. He is more than enough. I thank the Lord Jesus for baptizing me with the Holy Ghost last year on my birthday. How good and kind he is to me. The Lord knows how to soothe and heal my every pain, and I praise him for all he has done and will do in my life. He suffered for me so I can live. Can it get any better than this? He is worthy of all my love, and I, by his grace, will fulfill all he has called me to do for his glory. I thank the Lord for great leadership at TFOC. I thank all the godly people who sacrificed their time faithfully to serve the people of God here. All who do their part to further God's kingdom here, just know it doesn't go unnoticed. It matters to me and it matters to all of us. Love one another. This is the greatest gift you can give a fellow believer in the Lord. It is the second commandment after the loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I am thankful for my mom and dad who love the Lord and guide me to serve God even more so when it's hard. They always tell me God is for me and that he has great plans for me. I am thankful for those plans because I only want to fulfill those plans for the Lord's glory only. I thank God for my parents who always tell me to put God first. I thank God for my sister Abio who always has my back and wants to see me happy. Not everyone is blessed with a sister who wants you to win in life, even above their own happiness. I have that and I am thankful for her. Lastly, I thank God for my grandma who always has invested the word of God in me. She is my greatest cheerleader and I admire her beyond words. Thank you. Before I start, I would like to thank Pastor Shepherd and Brother Eddie for this opportunity to speak here today. This year, for me personally, has been a rough and tough year for me and for many I know. As the year comes to an end, I would if I were to describe the year in one word, it would be stressed. There are so many things that you see on the outside of people that you don't, truly don't see on the inside. We have gone through tough times and we are all guilty of not thanking God and giving him all the praise and worship that is due. And if there's one thing I've learned from all tough situations is to glorify God no matter what the storm is. Hence the theme of this year magnify the Lord. It is hard to be thankful for the basic things that we have because we all know that God is always there for us and he's always looking out for us, but in many ways we fall short and even I myself have become selfish and forgotten to thank God for what I have. And, and because of that, I am thankful. Um, I'm surrounded with a such, a such a beautiful and loving church to humble me. My mistakes, sins, imperfections, and flaws are the worst of them all, and all I can say is my God is so merciful. And I thank God for my family, brothers, friends, and mentors who haven't forgotten to pray for me and, and always let me know that they love me, especially to my mom, who I should always be thanking and appreciating because without her, I would not be living, literally. But I can't help but thank God, the supplier of it all, the one who helps me, and even when I don't deserve a single thing, he is, there for, he is still there for me through it all. It is not what God can give me, but rather who he is to me. And because of that, I am forever thankful. He is a father, a friend, a provider, a protector, a healer. He is all that I don't deserve, but he is there for me anyways. God is truly to be magnified, not only for what he can give you and all that he can supply you with, but because of how much he cares and loves you, both you and me. How much more mercy can he give? Too much to even count. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Our God comforts us, and I am forever thankful for the amount of love he gives me and to us all. You can hear me talk about God for hours and hours but you'll never know who he truly is without a relationship with him. In conclusion of this, um, I would like to thank my youth group, especially the amazing youth committee members that we have. I will never forget the memories I have made throughout this year and the amazing leadership of TCOC and loving people of this church who continue to encourage me in my relationship with God. This year, I have learned to be thankful for who God is and not just the little things. Let no man despise thy youth, but be an example to the believers. Amen. Amen. It's good to hear these different perspectives on, on how we ought to be thankful. Uh, and I want to do something a little fun here. You know, if you've 
got somebody, uh, even just one person within a hundred foot radius of you, I want you to, to take some time, right? Now, sometimes for some people, it may take a little bit longer, but I want you to think of something that you can thank them for. Why don't we just take a moment here in a church setting to look to the person to your left, to your right. Thank you for your smile. Thank you for how you're always giving. Thank you for your humor. Thank you for being here. Why don't you thank somebody? Thank you for looking good. Thank you for smelling good. Amen. Thank you for washing my clothes, Mom. Making my dinner. <laughs> There's so many things that we can be thankful for. Now, as you're still processing these thanks, thanking each other, I want you to, to keep that same spirit and that same attitude throughout this week and, of course, to let it be a part of our church culture. So we're going to stand together and, and pray tonight before we dismiss. Of course, we want to thank the Lord. We want to have that vertical connection, that vertical relationship. And we also want to have this horizontal connection with our, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors. And so we spent this time thanking the Lord, and we're going to thank the Lord in prayer. And as we dismiss, I want us to have that same attitude to just look at someone and thank them for something that they've done. So why don't we thank the Lord for this wonderful service and this night and this week that we're going to have. Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you, God for everything that you provided for us. It was even said, what if we didn't have anything tomorrow except what we thank you for today? We thank you for life, Jesus, and good health. We thank you even for bad health and difficult circumstances because you are glorified in all things. And we know as believers, we are healed in the name of Jesus. It's only a matter of time. So we thank you, Jesus, for all the things that you provided us, all the life and the goodness, Jesus, that you have put into this world. We thank you for your soon return. We thank you for the salvation of the saints and of the righteous. We thank you for your mercy and your patience, Jesus, in which you have restrained your coming, God, so that all who would would come to repentance. We thank you, Jesus, for this week, Lord, and weekend we're going to have. And we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Why don't we thank the Lord with a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So as you exit and as you enjoy your evenings and your morning and all the good food that's going to be there, Lord willing, tomorrow, make sure to be thankful to somebody. God bless you. You're dismissed tonight in Jesus' name.